Right, now for something completely different. This contraption might seem a little weird, but uh, it's actually something I should have done originally. And I'm sure anybody who's into this hobby will understand why I wanted to do something like this. Um, one of the problems I have with these big German radios is that the chassis, A, are heavy, B, are big, and often need to be flipped around, whether it be on its side, or rather with the bottom up or bottom down, um, also with the bottom facing front. So I've always had a problem. Um, you can't actually put it on its back upside down because you've got a lot of very sensitive stuff hanging out, like the selector switch there, the ferrite uh, antenna sticking out the top with some very, very fine wires on there. So putting it upside down so far has been impossible for me. What I've been able to do is flip it on with the front, uh, with the bottom to the front, which means I have to work on it sideways. And that sometimes can be quite inconvenient. So I decided to build this little gadget, this little rig, I suppose you'd call it. And um, it's one of those crazy things that you create when you're in need. And uh, what I did was I looked for the common denominator in all these chassis. And it seems to be, as far as a, a place to, to connect this to, it seems to be the four screws at the bottom that uh, you use to screw this thing onto the chassis. They're usually pretty hefty screws, and they're usually a fairly similar distance apart. So I built this little thing. I measured how much leeway or how much uh, space I would need. It figured out it was about 30 centimeters. As you can see, I actually figured it wrong. I should have given it another few centimeters, and that'll be version two, I suppose. Um, and put this thing together, literally with, you know, 10 bucks and uh, an hour's work. Um, the wood is screwed on and glued on at the, at the edges. And then I used one of these little metal L um, shaped things that uh, help to give it a little bit more sturdiness. And that's on all four sides. So these two sections are completely separate, screwed onto the bottom, and they work like a charm. So, I can literally flip this easily. There we go. One hand. Uh, I won't risk flipping it on its back with one hand, but uh, you get the idea. Uh, just to ensure that this thing uh, slides smoothly on the workbench, I put in these little felt pads. The bottom one has a double layer to make up for the height of the screws that you see there. So these are the actual screws that came with the radio to connect it to the bottom. And there we go. It works like a charm. So, uh, I think the next version will probably be a single strip of uh, four, four, um, four millimeter thick aluminium. I'll get them to bend it in the corners, make it slightly rounded so that it actually rolls over a lot easier and it'll be thinner, it'll be less clumsy. Um, I'll put a extra thickness at the bottom to make up for the space required for these screws and overall I think it's a pretty nifty piece of gear. There we go. It's now in a position where you can very easily get to all the components on the underside. No damage is done to the top side components. They've uh, got a fair amount of free room here. Um, and it seems to be the right size for this type of radio. I, I generally work on German radios, uh, Sabers and Telefunkens and now this greats. So they seem to be pretty standard in terms of uh, their configuration. At least so far, I don't recall any one where I won't be able to use this bottom screw setup. I think what I'll do next is uh, on the new version, version 2.0, uh, 
Okay, if I make it out of aluminium, I'll make the, the hole at the bottom here, you know, one of those long holes where the, so there's a, quite a bit of space here for the screw to tie on. And this will allow me to adjust it to various radios. As it is, I'm sure the next radio I get, if I use this particular one, I'm going to have to make some holes one side or the other of one of these original ones because I don't believe it'll fit exactly. But um, I'll solve that when I get to it. And here we have it. Basically, you can get an idea of what's been done here. These strips are, the total end to end is 30 centimeters. So they were cut, taking into consideration the thickness of that section there, which is 2.2 centimeters, so 27.8 centimeters each. These corners um, are about four centimeters high. They tend to hold it in place fairly well without a problem.